What's going on guys? It's Surfcast in the Island and today I'm going to be talking about the lures I use to target striped bass from the open beach inlets and back bays. The first lure I'm going to start with is one of the most significant being the bucktail and the reason being is it covers a wide range of conditions and a wide range of baits whether it be mullet, bunker, herring, sand deals that the bass are targeting. So the first bucktail I'm going to show you is a one ounce custom banana head. Unfortunately, you can't find this in the stores, but this is something I would typically use in the back bays where there's not a lot of current. Um, and what makes it special is it's got a wide flat bottom and it's got a narrow top leading towards the eye. What that does is when you snap it and you're working the bucktail, it's got a quick rise and a slow fall. What that does is it allows it to stay within that foot, foot and a half off the bottom, which I refer to as the strike zone where you want to be. And it's just very effective. Um, I've had a lot of luck with teen size and schoolie bass, typically, you know, smaller fish because of the back bays, you know, and that's just what's around. But say I'm fishing inlets and the open beach. I'll bump it up to a one and a quarter ounce. This is an Andros ball headed jig. A lot of guys like the um, rip splitters. I'm not a fan of them per se. I feel like they don't cut the wind as well on a cast. They don't really get into that rip where you really want to be in that strike zone like I keep stressing. Um, if there's a really heavy blow and you're fishing around the moon, I'll even go up to a one and a half, two. So pretty much I'll stay within that three quarters to one and a quarter ounce. Unless, like I said, the situation warrants something heavier. Um, in terms of the colors I use, I only use white typically. You hear the heyday this, the heyday that about guys with yellows and reds and greens just stick to white you'll see the results i've seen them myself i've had plenty of luck um if there's bigger fisher around i'll use andros um what are they called the jetty casters those have a beefier hook because unfortunately with these two types of models i've bent out the hook on some bigger fish and um you know it makes me think do i want to use this when i know the bigger fish are around um, in terms of trailers I use, I just stick, keep it simple. Like I said, same thing with the color. I use the white otter tail. This is the four and one eighths inch with the three quarter inch diameter. It's, it's up there with fat cow. It's great. I know a lot of guys, a lot of old timers used, um, pork rind. Unfortunately, they're not around anymore, but again, they hold up. The bluefish won't tear them off. Um, again, if you're using gulp though, which I do not recommend, you're going to be going through a lot more trailers. Um, and that's just the way it is. You know, 95% of my fishing on the South Shore of Long Island from Rockaways all the way to Montauk typically, um, not so much as opposed to local though, is going to be bucktailing. And, you know, I keep telling people if you leave me with a, a couple bucktails anywhere I'll, I'll find fish and it's just as simple as that there's no really other lure that fishes like it does the next type of baits I'm going to talk about are swim baits and this this uh, falls under a wide umbrella of different types of styles and presentations um, funny thing is the one here this is a swimming fluke this is actually a freshwater bait um, but I found from fishing estuaries and whatnot I'm not going to give them away um, they're just so effective. I mean, there's no other way to say it. Um, I've caught many and many of fish when they're keen in on spearing and little rain bait, uh, bay anchovies. It just works so well on some of my back base spots. I, I can't even begin to tell you. Um, this is a three quarter ounce VMC head. I typically don't go heavier than that in the back bays. I'll, maybe I'll bump it up to a one when I'm fishing you know some deeper holes and pockets that I just know by heart um, but again this is you know this relies heavily on mimicking um, rain bait like I said before if there's bigger baits around you know you guys have probably fished Little Neck Bay in the Western Sound 
I'll use the Tsunami rubber shads. They, they work great. Um, again, I'm keeping it as general as possible. There's many different shapes and sizes depending on where you're fishing and how you're fishing. Um, I've caught plenty of nice team size fish on this particular color. This is the shad. Um, but again, shad and bunker colors are probably my go-to with these bigger profile baits. Um, typically this is used in the spring and whatnot. Um, another great swim bait where the fish are really finicky. This is something I'd use in the fall. This is a six inch tsunami sand deal. I like the smaller profile. A lot of guys like the seven eighths and nine inch sand deals. But again, I feel like they don't really mimic that bait as well. The bigger you go, I feel like the smaller profiles give you, um, a much better presentation of what these fish are keen in on. There's days I've been out there when guys are throwing tins and whatnot, and they, they just, they, they can't get a bite. Um, and that's just how it is sometimes. They really key in, especially in the fall, they're keeping their heads up, they're keen in on a certain bait. And I mean, the Tsunami Sandy, like I said, it just, it gets the job done. There's no other way to say it. The next type of baits I'm gonna talk about are tins. And this kind of plays off of the tsunami sand deals because at heart they're supposed to mimic sand deals with their long slender shiny presentation um this is called the, the runoff this is a two and a half ounce it looks exactly like a sand deal it's got the hackles and everything and this is pretty much one of my go-to plugs besides the bucktail and the reason being is it has such good castability unlike a lot of other lures in the market um, cuts the wind if you have a south southwest wind anything southerly it's very very difficult to cut the wind sometimes especially when you have a 20 25 30 plus knot blow um, and again I've caught many of fish and guys you know guys throwing diamond jigs they they can't they can't keep up because sometimes it's just the way it is you know the green tail as you'd see on a diamond jig or red tail that you'd see on a diamond jig that's all friction with casting and that affects how far it's going to go and if those fish are sitting on an outer bar you're going to have you're going to have trouble reaching them um which brings me to my second bait which is your typical diamond jig i'll use anywhere from an a27 a17 um but there are days where they will take the tail over something with hackles on it and that's just the way it is i had one day off rockaway this past year where all they wanted was a green tail and if you were throwing anything else even even a runoff tin you just weren't catching them it just it goes to show you like you really have to key in on um what you're throwing and what's working and what's not because the smallest change can make the biggest difference sometimes with these bass the next style of bait I'll be discussing is uh, swimming plugs and as opposed to tins and stuff that dives deeper on a slower retrieve this is something you want to throw in um, the shallow rips um, somewhere where these fish are going to be near deep water but come up on the flat to feed and you know a lot of guys talk about you know um, bombers and whatnot but in my opinion you guys heard of it everyone has at this point sp minnows they work they come in a wide variety of shapes sizes and colors the sinking the floatings and whatnot but since i'm going to be fishing like i said in shallow flats and rips i just go with the floating you know it, it's worked and you know guys think oh you need bucktails and whatnot and daughters those are big fish plugs but the truth of the matter is on this exact color um, and this exact style of a floating type minnow, I caught my biggest bass this past fall. It was a 40 and change. We weighed it, it was like 39.8 or 40 pounds. And um, that was at the bottom of the tide, you know, not a lot of water around. Um, and the bucktail just kept hitting bottom. And like I said, you want with the bucktail, you want to stay in that foot, foot and a half. But I was only casting into about three, four feet. So you're hitting the bottom very quick. So with a floating style bait, or even I'm sure a red fin would work in that type of application, um, it would just work perfectly for that one fish I was targeting specifically. It was all big fish that day, and you know 
I knew nothing else was going to work that would, you know, stay within that strike zone, and it did. Um, and again, you could fish SP minnows anywhere from inlets and back bays to the open beach. Um, you know, that funny thing was that was in an inlet with not a lot of water in it, but typically an SP minnow is something that I would throw in the back bays, western sound, you know, any of those estuaries. Um, and they just work, you know, they catch fish, you know, it's a nighttime plug predominantly, but, um, you know, unlike a lot of these other plugs I would throw in the day, but even during the day, I, I've seen a lot, a lot of fish and a lot, a lot of success on it. So the final style of bait I'll be discussing today are top water type baits. And, um, again, these are great. Again, I don't really use them a lot. They're not as effective when you want to consistently catch fish, but every now and then when you want to see a fish come up and hit a plug, a bass, a blue fishes, there's no other excitement like that. But, um, again, they do get big fish. I've, I've had plenty of luck. Long Beach and all the way east, Nickerson. I'm sure you guys are familiar with those beaches. I, I've had a lot of luck on top water. Um, but again, it's not something consistent that I'm going to be using on a continuous basis. Um, and the first plug I'll show you is um, the Super Strike Little Neck Popper. This is the 2 and 3 eighths ounce um, in yellow. And typically, when I'm throwing poppers and stuff like that, I'm trying to mimic peanut bunker and um, adult bunker. I mean, they flip a lot on the surface. I'm sure if you guys have seen bunker pods and whatnot. Um, and they, they work very well. Um, this I would throw on the open beach. This is a sinking plug. Anything that has a black eye, as you guys know, Super Strike is a sinking. Black and red sinks, green floats. Um, I would throw this on the open beach with a lot of, you know, a lot of white water, a lot of wind to cut through. Um, and it just, it, it pulls fish, especially when you're fishing along a jetty where fish are waiting for, you know, white water to come up over their head and use that to ambush any type of bait going into the wash. Um, on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, if I'm fishing back bays and whatnot or a calm day on the open beach, I would throw one of my favorites and one of my favorite colors, which would be the cotton cordell, the red-headed cotton cordell you guys know about. It's, it's a classic plug, caught many of fish. Um, typically I would throw in, you know, mild conditions to super flat calm. It's not a plug you want to throw in hairy conditions because it's going to tend to spin. It'll tumble. It'll it'll roll the um, it'll roll the leader up and you'll just have a disaster. But as opposed to the popping action on a super strike, something like this is you would walk the dog, which would be a steady pump in the rod, which would be back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And typically all these other lures up until this point I've spoken about would just be on a slow to moderate retrieve, you know, snapping it every two or three turns of the handle. Um, but this you want slack in the line when you're snapping it because that's what will give it that cadence back and forth. And guys say, oh, you can only throw pencils and whatnot during the day. I've had nights where this is where the, this is the only plug that they would hit, you know. I had one night I was fishing Bay Park and all they wanted was a Smoky Joe Cotton Cordell and guys would throw minnows and bucktails and couldn't get a hit. Um, and sometimes, you know, the things that you wouldn't think would work, you know, end up working in the end. Um, and again, it's just one of my favorite top waters to throw. Now, if you really don't want to change your lore too, too much, you go to a Tsunami Talking Popper, it's great. This is what I would call a hybrid between a Super Strike and a Cotton Grip Cordell because um, you could pop it, but since it's a cigar style bait, you could also walk it. So it becomes very effective because you could do a varying retrieve. You could pop, pop, and then you could start walking and go back to popping it. So you could really, you could really play your cards right in terms of, you know, getting a reaction strike because a lot of these fish you're targeting you know we don't have those big bait patterns like we do in montauk so you're really looking for a reaction strike most of the time if not unless you're using bait but again these are the, my three go-to top waters when i'm throwing top water which is 
not so often because I have other options that work very well. But um, yeah, this concludes this video. I mean, I've left out daughters and needlefish and whatnot. But again, I don't want to um, give you guys information on something I don't have a lot of experience with. I feel like those types of plugs are much bigger and pull much more consistent fish um, out east in Montauk and, you know, Smith's Point. Like, we don't really have that bait pattern around here, typically. It's mostly, like I said earlier in the video, schoolies to teen size fish. But um, again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys soon. So like, comment, and subscribe.